Hello everyone. Welcome to our session, Istio and Supply Chain Security, where we will be talking about how Istio is adopting some of the supply chain security best practices. I'm Fasila, and I work as a cloud native software developer at Ericsson, and I'm a contributor to Istio Service Mesh. Together with me is my colleague, Adolfo. Adolfo, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Adolfo Garcia Betia. I am a staff software engineer with ChainGuard, and I am also one of the technical leads with Kubernetes Securities. Okay, so hope you're all having an amazing time at IstioCon, where we have already had a lot of interesting sessions from several speakers about trust and open source. Uh, we have had an insight to what users or customers need in terms of quality and security. And the speakers here already touched upon various potential problems and concerns we face as we adopt open source into our solutions and deployments. So we, we are here uh, to give you an overview about how Istio is making sure it takes timely measures to embrace uh, all possible ways to improve its security posture. Uh, let's take a look at the agenda now. We intend to use this as an awareness session to shed some light on what are the open source ways to solve some of these problems on supply chain security and how this enables a zero trust architecture. There are a lot of ongoing activities and communities um, uh, that are uh, trying to address the problem of cloud native security in a collaborative manner. Uh, so let's take a look at some of these open source tools and technologies and so, also see how we were able to collaborate and uh, adopt these best practices to Istio as well. And uh, one beautiful thing about open source um, is the extent to which you can go beyond organizational boundaries and collaborate to achieve a common interest for common good. For example, considering our case, I never knew Adolfo before, but uh, when I had requirements uh, from my company, Ericsson, to push for better supply chain security posture for Istio. And when I started talking to the Istio maintainers, that's the time when I was uh, redirected to the Kubernetes bomb team, which led to a very smooth and nice integration activity. Honestly, today is the first time I'm in a live meeting with Adolfo, having his voice uh, and video, even though we have uh, been working together for months now on Slack, enabling S bomb for Istio. Uh, so this in turn is an example of how easy and smooth it is if any of the projects want to leverage the existing standards and initiatives in the open source world. Uh, next slide. So uh, software uh, supply chain, uh, there, here is a nice definition for the same. Uh, what people, processes, and tools make up the software you deploy? That's called a software supply chain. It comprises everything your software undergoes uh, from a developer to consumer. Uh, next slide. So the vast majority of developers today, they don't develop uh, software uh, from the ground up and instead rely on third party resources when creating a software. Uh, by using pre-built libraries and open source components, uh, it, we can reduce development and production costs, bringing products to market faster. Uh, however, uh, insecure supply chains are a potential threat to cloud security as we don't have a complete transparent end-to-end -end view of the overall process in this context. So as can be seen in this slide, there are chances for threats at each stage in a supply chain, which is very complex to tackle. Next. Yeah. A supply chain attack is when an attacker indirectly attacks a target by attacking a vendor. So this situation is very complicated to track as this requires a tight security model in place across the supply chain. So if we take a look at a history of similar attacks over the last 10 years or so, we have like very wide variety of examples spanning from infected USB drivers to infiltrated uh, third party networks to even trusted technicians installing malware to ATMs. So there were software providers compromised to coders committing malicious code to source code repositories and so on. Um, next slide. Now let's take a quick tour of some of the active open source communities that are working on tackling uh, these problems. And let us see how we can build a strong security model if we integrate these projects together. So we have uh, divided uh, this into three sections. Uh, in the first section, we'll be talking about some of the open source tools uh, around this area. And then we'll talk about some of the standard bodies that are in place. And then later we will be talking about uh, uh, the uh, software, some of the software st standards that are available, uh, which has helped us uh, create S-bombs and other measures. Uh, 
So here, SIGSTORE is a public cryptographically secure ledger which ties releases to identities. So as a user, you can validate a signed artifact, manifest, or metadata with SIGSTORE. In Toto, mentioned here, it helps by defining a transparent software development lifecycle process. Spiffy uh, is a universal identity control plane for distributed systems. Tough for the update framework provides a framework that can be used to secure new and existing software update systems. So we are not planning to go into detail to everything, but it, it's like just giving an overview. So this explains how these projects enable like zero trust architecture of identity, policy and control. Next slide. Yeah. So here we talk about uh, some of the standard bodies that are in place. Uh, like uh, first thing is for the cloud native security. Cloud native security refers to both platform and infrastructure security as well as you know application security. So all the projects which we already talked about has very active communities. So apart from that, if you take a look at the CNCF attack security page, you'll get an overall view what the vision for cloud native security is. On the right side, you see the Open SSF, like Open Source Security Foundation. It's a community uh, that strives to secure the overall open source ecosystem where it provides support through a combination of uh, automated tooling, best practices, education, and collaboration. Now, when we talk about uh, SBOMs or Software Bill of Materials, which is the main topic for this session, uh, let us see what are the open source projects that are involved. Since yes, bombs are intended to be shared across companies and communities, uh, having a consistent format uh, with consistent content is very critical. So the NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration guidelines, specify a few standards as approved formats. Two of them are listed down here, SPDX and Cyclone DX. While all of them satisfy the minimum SBOM guidelines, they differ in terms of you know, process, output, scope of coverage, and they have different roadmaps. Um, I've included GitBOM also here. It is another novel approach uh, towards generating artifact trees at build time. Uh, it's a, an interesting topic, so something with really to look forward to. Uh, I'm glad that Istio is ac also actively involved in speeding up these initiatives, embracing some of these works. So we started with producing S-bombs for Istio from 1.13 releases onwards. So what is an S-bomb or software bill of material? A software bill of material, as uh, the definition given here, is uh, uh, a formal record containing the details and supply chain relationships of various components uh, used in building a software. It includes even open source softwares. Uh, for example, in the wake of the SolarWinds attack some time back, there was an executive order published by the White House advocating for mandatory software bills of materials uh, to increase software transparency and counter supply chain attacks. So this was definitely a great step towards providing greater transparency for the software that all organizations are using. So we do use uh, this zero trust security model in our all our networks and endpoints and all. But when it comes to supply chains, uh, we really do not know how to do this. So for supply chain security, Mostly, uh, uh, it's not transparency, but we just, uh, uh, the foundation is always trust. So SBOMs provide a stopping stone towards achieving this transparency and allow us to start uh, moving towards a zero trust approach for uh, software supply chains. Uh, now, this slide talks about the various purposes of a software bill of material serves. So an SBOM helps us identify and avoid non-vulnerabilities. It has a better way to manage software licenses and associated compliance requirements, helps us assess the risks associated with the software package in a quantified manner, and makes it easier to mitigate CVEs. And with all this, it improves the cost efficiency because, you know, we, we don't have to uh, spend a lot of time or effort and uh, things on last minute release hurdles. So now we are going to talk about some of the standards present in the open source world, which tries to bring together all these efforts around SBOM so that, uh, so that we have a uniform model to follow across the open source projects. Um, so we are going to talk about SPDX majorly, and it would be best if uh, Adolfo talks about the same as he's an active member to the community and his uh, team has built a great tool on top of this that is the KRS bomb, which we are now leveraging in Istio as well. So over to you Adolfo to share more interesting details about the same. 
Yeah, thank you, Fasila. Uh, so yeah, as mentioned, uh, the Kubernetes project embarked on the on an, on the mission to uh, provide a better certainty to its users, and we have been trying to uh, keep all of the development of our tools uh, open so that other people can uh, reuse them. Uh, so we, as part of the Linux Foundation, Kubernetes is using the SPDX format for its head swarms. Uh, the, the, the standard is a project of the Linux Foundation and has been under development for quite a long time for now, uh, over 10 years. And recently, last year, it was um, uh, codified as a standard in the International Standards Organization. Um, the current version is 2.2 and uh, there, are, there is a very active community to, to uh, make some changes and bring out a new version 3, which will be out soon. So let's uh, take a little look at what's inside of an SBOM to understand what, what it looks like and the structure and what information we can find in them. So an SBOM, uh, an SBOM starts with, an S with a document. Um, a document contains some metadata about itself, uh, such as the, its name, the date it was produced, uh, who created it using which tools, and then in that document, you start listing the contents. The contents can uh, be packages, as um, as shown in this uh, in this diagram here. Uh, packages are um, can be listed as empty, just simple empty packages representing, for example, a system package. Or if you think about a system package listed in an SVM, you can also list the contents of that package as files, for example. But files can also be listed as first-class citizens in the SBOM at the top of the at the top level. Uh, but then, what's interesting about uh, SPDX is that all the all the elements inside of the SBOM can be related between each other. Uh, for example, here we can uh, see a, a theoretical SBOM where package uh, one can be, for example, a container image and you can list inside of the SOM uh, relationship pointing it as being generated from package number two. Or you can see how file number one could be marked as being a test of file uh, number three, for example. Uh, this is uh, an example of how uh, an SOM looks like. It is a little bit of a, it is a bit of the, of the Istio SOM, uh, but I'll save it for Facila to speak more about it later. Um, so files can capture the file name, the checksums, which are very important to ensure file integrity. They can capture licensing information. Uh, the White House requirements have derived in uh, efforts like, for example, the, the NTIA's definition of a minimum element of SBOMs. Um, uh, those guidelines from the US government establish the minimum elements that all SBOMs should provide. And, uh, for identifying its, uh, the software components uh, they're describing. Uh, packages can also have information about themselves, like name, uh, the file name, uh, where you can uh, push the packages pointing to, the originator, uh, the licensing, and packages can have many licenses, for example, and then all of those are, are there. And the third part of the SPDX standard is the uh, big and rich um, uh, relationships catalog that uh, you can use to interrelate all of the documents. Another thing to note is that SBOMs can also link external SBOMs. So you can have small SBOMs pointing to SBOMs stored somewhere else to create a rich uh, ecosystem and well, a system of interoperable interacting documents describing a more complex software uh, release or project. Um, as said before, uh, ESOMs can list many different kinds of artifacts. Uh, you can add, uh, for example, uh, binaries in there, which are, um, uh, and you can add information that is useful for things like operating systems, for example. You can have, uh, you can describe container images, and you can add information that uh, container systems can understand, like Kubernetes, for example, uh, source code. Uh, you can add system packages. Basically, any kind of any kind of artifact that you can abstract away as either a file or a package 
which groups other components can be expressed inside of an S1. Um, so one important thing to note is that uh, when, as Facilia mentioned earlier, uh, supply chains are a really complex ecosystem and securing them is really hard. So uh, to guide in this, in the journey of securing a supply chain, a software supply chain, there are things like Salsa, which is a framework of the OpenSSF. That uh, framework uh, defines uh, gradual levels, which you can use to start on your, to get you started on your, on your supply chain security journey. Uh, and the first level calls for better visibility into your, into your release processes. Uh, SBOMs are the, the first tool that you should adopt doing that. Uh, Kubernetes started doing that uh, one, one and a half years ago, and we started with the SBOM. And the tools uh, that we did were uh, derived in the Kubernetes SBOM, and now the tools that anyone can use. Um, and I am super happy to see the our ACT friends adopting uh, our tools in their uh, SBOM journey. So uh, back to Fasila to talk about, about their, their efforts. Okay, so um, when I started uh, working on Istio and wanted to generate SBOM for Istio, I had started analyzing different bomb generation tools that are available. Uh, we did take a look at the SPDX on bomb generator, and also we had a look at other standards available like uh, Cyclone DX as well, outside SPDX. Uh, I proposed an RFC to the working group asking for their opinion, and it's at that time I learned about the KATS uh, bomb utility being available for other projects as well. Uh, so st we started exploring that and uh, we got a chance to collaborate with the Kubernetes release engineering team involving at Alpha, and we started the integration work. Uh, so there were some small changes that were needed to the utility so that uh, it can work uh, seamlessly with Istio source code and release artifacts, uh, but uh, we were able to fix them on a timely manner and uh, we were able to get um, SPDX compliant bill of materials for Istio. Uh, so this... Um, yeah, that's, that the previous slide was just talking about how the commands uh, can be used uh, to generate. It's very easy to use the bomb utility. And so even if it is for the source code and even if it's for your release artifacts, uh, the command line is very, very pretty much straightforward and easy to use. Uh, so this slide just shows you the syntax and how you can uh, use it. Yeah, and the next slide um, was um, just talking about the journey, how we were able to do whatever I already mentioned. Uh, so how we were able to finally get XPDX uh, compatible uh, bill of materials for Istio. So next slide. You can move to the, yeah, so the source S bomb. So uh, in Istio, we generate two S bomb files for Istio as part of our uh, release artifacts uh, now. One for the source code and another one for the release artifacts. Uh, so this slide is showing like a small snippet of how the source code bomb file looks like. Uh, this pre pretty much uh, has uh, whatever Adolfo was previously talking about and how a bomb file looks like. Now the next slide um, shows how the release S bomb file uh, looks like. So the release S bomb includes information about all the release artifacts that are published by Istio, including like layer by layer scanning of all the released Docker images as well, which is like very easy to understand. Uh, now, yeah, next uh, we can just see what is what is there in S Istio release uh, in here. So yeah, the usual Istio release previously it had all. Um, required uh, binaries and tarballs and packages uh, for uh, different operating systems and different architectures. So now from 1.13 uh, release onwards, uh, you will see the last bullet that is new, uh, which is uh, the SPDX compatible SBOM files that will be also present as part of our release. Uh, so all whatever is uh, listed down here in the other bullets the uh, information about all those items will be present in the published SBOM files as well now so for the future plans uh, maybe adolfo you can uh, just give uh, the plans for the kubernetes bomb utility yeah so the kubernetes uh, SBOM utility is under uh, active development we're constantly adding 
new features, box, fix, fixing bugs to it. And it's, it's of course open source and always waiting for more collaborators. Uh, uh, Facila has been a contributor with us, uh, fixing and adding features uh, that the, the Istio project needed. And um, But we are happy to hear you and to uh, listen. Uh, we are open to listening to suggestions and other features that we want. So some of the features we're working on are parsing of uh, system uh, packages, RPMs, devs, APKs, and uh, that, that kind of packages. We are working, East, East, uh, our, our s tool contains a YAML configuration, can support a YAML configuration file to make you able to run it uh, as part of your CI CD system. And that YAML file can, um, is constantly getting improvements. Uh, we are looking into integrating this with the official SPDX libraries from uh, the Linux Foundation. That's a project we're exploring. Uh, we want to support other output encodings. Uh, SPDX can be output to JSON, to a uh, particular as a tag value language, which we just showed. Uh, we're, we're looking to, to supporting more and also reading uh, them. Um, we uh, started supporting some document visualization. You can explore what's inside of an S1. Uh, and we are working to attaching those documents also to container images using the libraries from Sixor. One one key bullet here that I forgot to, to add is we are about to release version 0 0.3, which will enable a query language to search for things inside of S1. So if you're looking to see if you are using a particular uh, dependency that you may be interested in, say you want to query your S1 for, to look for logic, look for J, for example, you will be able to use the, the our tool to, to query the document and get all of the, the dependencies that uh, match a certain, a certain query. Yeah, okay. For, so for the Istio, SBOM and other related supply chain security activities, yes, we would like to explore further new features that are provided by k SBOM utility to see if we can use them. Also, if there is a need, we would like to explore uh, further SBOM standards like Cyclone DX. And uh, there are also other activities ongoing in Istio with respect to six store integration and validation, which in turn strengthens our security posture. So uh, for the bomb, uh, KHS bomb, uh, uh, also, if there are plans to integrate Cyclone DX, of course, we'll, it, it will be easier for other users to use. So we'll see that as well. Yeah, so that's it for the session. And I wish let's all work together towards the future where operators, administrators, and developers feel confident uh, creating new cloud native applications based on open source. Yeah. so. If there are any questions, we are happy to help. Otherwise, uh, feel free to reach out to us for any further information. Mm -hmm.